Invincible was born to the Mare Brightmane on the Balneo farmstead in Tirisfal Glades in the winter of the year Stormwind fell. Prince Arthas, then nine years old, was present when he was born and was given the horse by the Balnir family. Ten years later in winter, before Arthas was inducted into the Knights of the Silver Hand, Arthas exertion in the numbing cold resulted in a crippling injury to his beloved Invincible. Too far from help and unable to heal the stricken horse, Arthas was forced to kill him in order to relieve his pain. He was buried on the grounds of the Balne farmstead at Arthas' request. Invincible's death was one of the events that inspired Arthas to become a paladin. After the fall of Lord Darion years later, Arthas, now a death knight, ran directly from Lordarion after murdering his father to the Balne farmstead where Invincible was buried. With the power of Frostmourne, Arthas resurrected the horse as his undead steed. Even in death, Invincible remains loyal to Arthas. He stays forever with his master who sits the frozen throne of Northrend, waiting for his time to lay waste upon the world with the power of the Scourge. So, you want to know how to get your hands on that sweet ass dead pony? Well, you came to the right place. With its amazingly high drop rate of one whole percent, we are going to show you the entire trip you need to take in order to defeat the Bitch King in a duel to the death. Get to the instance. It's located here. Invincible only drops on Heroic, so make sure you have a clear 25 man at least once and set the difficulty accordingly. Walk in a straight line until you bump into Maragon. Kill him before he uses Bonestorm, otherwise you get impaled and will be forced to watch him Bladestorm for a good couple of minutes. Loot! Run around the corner to get to Lady Death Whisper. If your DPS isn't awesome enough, do not disregard the ads! They will curse you and give any ability you use a 15 second cooldown, making this fight extremely painful. Loot! Stand here as you wait for the lift to calm down. Depending on what faction you are, go left or right. Alliance goes left. Jump on the flying Titanic. Talk to your captain. Jump into a cannon. Now start spamming the one button until the bar to right goes to 90% or above. Don't let it hit 100% or it will overheat. This fight was nerfed into the ground, so a single attack with your charged up two button, taking into account that you actually aim and hit the enemy ship, will end the encounter. Loot the chest. Talk to your captain and wait for this sucker to come out. Nothing special here, he can't outheal your amazing damage anyway. The chest is to the right, but you might want to wait a few seconds after the encounter is over. Because if you are straight through the chest, it is known to bug the fuck out, stealing your gold and your time. Loot the chest. Run inside. Go left. Get inside the plague quarter. Oh hi doggy. Go right and kill the pup for a chance at the rare precious ribbon shirt and... Oh. Huh. Get into Rockface Crib. Give that spoiled brat a good spanking. Loot! Make sure you turn this vault before you leave. Get across the corridor into Festigut's room. If you have a CC immunity spell, use it to counter the first disorientation effect. If you don't have any, tough luck! As an energy user, make sure you go full DPS mode here, because your energy bar gets fucked sideways. Loot! Make sure to turn this vault before you leave. Get into the middle. Go on Scarface and kill some cockroaches until the door open. Tank is back. Loot! Go back to the upper spire. Go left! Get inside the blood quarters. Kill some fools to open the gate. Go forward to start the prince event. Focus your DPS on the prince with the health bar. AOE is futile. Loot. Go left. 
conceal your true power level until she bites you. Then go all spirit bomb with the double DPS buff she foolishly gave you. Loot! Turn around and jump into the hole that was conveniently created. Or run into solid ground and watch the hole appear behind you. Go left! Enter the frost quarters. Kill the mobs in this corridor. Once all the RP has taken care of itself, kill the Valkyrie. Loot! Get into Dreamwalker. Now, you don't have to do this boss, you can simply go past her. But if you have healing spells, just kill these ads for good measure and spam heal the boss. Seriously. That's all you do. Loot the chest. Wait for the elevator. Get into the room and start trashing mobs left, right and center. Keep your eye out for when the gate opens, as mobs continue to spawn even after it has. Kill these small dragons. Kill these larger dragons. Kill this much larger dragon. Loot. Go back. Go right. Press this thing. Choose upper spire. Run into the center of the room. Now, before you start, make sure to dismiss your pets and companions. Otherwise, you might fuck up, step in a ring of black death, and fly all the way to Dalaran. Slap him down to 70% to start the next phase. When he goes to the middle, keep smacking him. We're not scared of this pathetic damage any longer. What we are scared of are these ice spheres. Make sure you have AoE or ranged damage available for them, otherwise that trip to Dalaran might still become a reality. If you pancaked his souffle hard enough, he will start doing the ice dance once again. The same rules apply. Fuck the ice spheres. Go to the kitchen and get a cup of coffee as Arthas enters RP mode and wait for Tyrion to buy the light, that fucker! to hit escape as soon as you see Arthas trying to grab his helmet. The cinematics give zero fucks about your preferred sound settings. Congratulations! If you have followed these basic instructions, you are already an owner of the infamous World of Warcraft flying horse. Or, in about 82 weeks, you too will become one. Now go link-span that mount to everyone on your friends list. Good night and good luck!